All right. Let's talk about stencils today and stenciling in uh, watercolor painting. So, you now this came out of some commercial product. We could use doilies. There used to be alphabets with letters, forwards, backwards. There's whole sets of them that you could probably find. The old plastic lace, you can see where former students have tried that. <clears throat> There's that proverbial vegetable bag. This came off a box of Godiva chocolates, probably in the winter, a little snowflake pattern. This is a commercial. A commercial has been used with spray paints, commercial spray paints in the past. This is another commercial one. I really like this one a lot. This came off a bag of bulbs I got, you know, to plant. And so what I did was is I coated it with some uh, polymer varnish, you know, um, satin, ground satin. And, you know, it works fine. It resists the water. Here's another commercial one that it cost 99 cents at one point in time. Anyway, people used to use these in their house to decorate. I don't want to show you some that I cut out of plastic. That's too shiny. Let me see the matte side. <laughs> Excuse me. So there's one I cut and I used uh, for some time. This is another one I cut with the... This actually goes over another tree. Another commercial one, which I've used quite a bit in watercolor. All right, so what are we going to do? I'm going to actually reveal underneath here. I have some projects ready to go. I have prepped and then I flattened some paper because I always like a reveal. Now, how are you going to get the paint on there? One way <clears throat> is to use a bottle. You can buy these on the Internet and then comes with the bottles or not. You know, once you have a lot of bottles, you can just buy the sprayer component. And you fill it with thinned ink. Here's another sprayer that, you know, it's a hand pump. Here's another sprayer. You all might have something like this at home. I filled it with a nice pink. All right, so what are we going to do? I am going to choose this stencil. So you don't want to get it too wet. With watercolor, you get it too wet. It goes un it seeps underneath. Well, maybe then I could put a little of this purple on. And I'll lift it so you can see the reveal right away. Not bad. Pull that one aside, then we bring back another one. And when that dries, then I <coughs> could put yet another stencil on top of it. So another way to do a stencil is if you have some relatively thick paint so so that it's not too moist. If it's moist, again, like the spray bottle, if you spray too much, you are going to have it seep under. So I've got a little this is actually Sumi watercolor ink comes in these lovely little porcelain trays. I've taken a synthetic sponge. Move this down. Often I will let these dry with it on because the seepage seems to happen a bit when you lift it. But for the instant reveal. Not too bad. There's a bit of seepage on the other side. Let's see. Let me protect that area I just did. And then I'll do 
the wonderful toothbrush. Old toothbrush. It'd be funny if you could get an electric one. So you want to get a fair amount of paint on there, and there's a little rise in this. I'm going to weight it down. Hopefully you can still see this. And then I just flick it, same way. There we go. So this is putting much more controlled, little amount on there. Making it very sweet. And then of course with this one, it was so minimal, it's not as wet as you can see that that one had been. Just lift it off. So again, you can go out and purchase um, stencils, which work very well, uh, or you can cut your own out of either a nice uh, heavy paper, some minimal cardboard, so you don't have uh, so many little hairy edges. Now, this is another stencil sort of project. This is this is what is this this is gauze four ply gauze i've laid it out on top of something i already painted yesterday and this one we'll have to wait and see how it works because it does it a little differently as it dries the gauze the cotton gauze makes a stencil and this one as i say again you can't pick up right away and it doesn't matter if we get it too too wet although i am going to keep it on the dry side the pigment all right so we'll see this when it's dry all right <clears throat> let's get back to stenciling so this is a stencil you can barely see see it that's why I did it off camera um, anyway I sprayed it here and I taped it down and now I'm going to do another one that is much easier to see the outline of the stencil because it's yellow so what do I have here I have a stencil I'm going to one tape it down two anything that's white paper I'm going to cover and so I don't go overshot. I can show you later a picture of overshot. So that means when the spray ends up going where I don't want it to go. And let's see. The stencil almost goes right to the edge of the page. So it's a little, <clears throat> a little difficult. <coughs> a little there. <clears throat> then we need a nice longer piece over here. <coughs> a great thing to do with other pa old painting. All right, there we go. <clears throat> I've mixed up in a spray bottle some kind of reds, a variety of reds. I'm going to hold this quite a bit up, and you can see slowly if I hold it up and straight in a pump bottle like that I could get a clearer pattern and I'm not going to shove it under the stencil so good no overspray here here and the way I did this kind of stencil I can lift this one up immediately So that as it sits on that paper, it is not going to overspray. So then we have another splatter screen. Let's get back to the stencils. I told you I was going to show you one with overshot. There it is. I put down this stencil just like this. You can still see that color on the stencil. Uh, I did not, however, include this portion here in my tape out. Oh, just like that. I covered these. 
cover at the bottom, but did not get that. So there's a thing of when you're using a stencil, remember, <clears throat> and you're spraying, cover the excess area so that uh, you don't have that possibly ruin a painting at the end. I mean, or at the beginning, we can still make many changes and I could probably stencil this over it and it might hide it very well. So let's try that. I'm going to put on all my little overshot pieces. Oops, there we go. Because the stencil doesn't come all the way to the edge, there's no reason <clears throat> that I have to tape off the entire paper. Right, that'll do. <clears throat> Get that nice blue out again. Blue purple. And what we're doing is we're just going to create something to fix a boo-boo. Fix something that we didn't plan on happening, but it happened anyway. How can you fix it? So we're trying to fix it by a distraction. There you go. Now, do you necessarily see that overspray as much anymore? Not really. You're right. I also wanted to go back to the piece that I did. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you the results of uh, using the gauze with watercolor. You can see that I've taken off the gauze here and that there is a slight pattern in the gauze. So remember, there was an undercoat of a color, lighter color, and variegated color. And on top, I also variegated the color. Uh, which was a darker color. And then up here, you can see that I have oversplash. Well, I got to figure out what I might do with that. So to avoid the oversplash, here's another one. And I just protected it with a piece of paper. So there's no oversplash to this one. This is a much better uh, result using the gauze. Beautiful obscure patterns and even lighter ones here. Not sure if you can see it or if my camera is in focus, but I just love this ambient pattern. I'll do another video on the gauze pieces uh, to help show you what else might be done. All right.